and for some reasons you have not continued but you think that you can do it and you were very good in maths till class 12th so hello everyone myself shwetnisha and today we are discussing about uh, mathematics optional subject in your upsc so uh, we are going to discuss about syllabus uh, exam pattern there are some common mistakes that you can avoid and uh, the very very important question whether you can take mathematics optional or not okay this is this is a very common question so we'll talk about that as well and we'll start with that we'll start uh, with the discussion that with your so and so background you can take mathematics optional or not okay so i'm going to categorize students in three parts here number 1 students who have done mathematics only till class 12 second those who have done or pursuing bsc or msc and the third one having engineering background engineering background having a uh, civil engineering or uh, computer science or electronics or any other doesn't matter you know, mechanics now first okay uh, first of all i'm not considering students having only mathematics till 10th class i'm not even considering them don't even think about it let's talk about 12th class okay so if you have done uh, mathematics till 12th class and for some reasons you have not continued but you think that you can do it and you were very good in maths till class 12th so what i want you to do is i want you to go back to class 11 class 12 books and see all the differentiation and integration formulas after looking at the formulas try some questions you can try with the examples okay if you think that these examples are not now helping you with the examples you are not able to do that without the help then there is a question mark uh this subject may trouble you because uh it's an optional subject choose it very wisely so i don't want you to do any mistake over here so it's better that you don't go with the subject okay but if you think that yeah obviously i re- i do remember some of the formulas and uh, after giving them a uh revision i can try some questions and i i just remembered that what was eilert rule uh what was um uh, integration by substitution what is the differentiation of some basic uh Uh, this um, uh, basic function sin x cos x e raised to the power x all those functions so then you might consider it right and uh, you can you can you can go with the optional subject okay but obviously you need to put more efforts than the others okay you you have to be ready for that so you need to maintain that uh, you need to have that mentality that i need to do more hard work in this subject but definitely uh, it will be worth next bsc msc you might have done bsc honors in physics or chemistry but because mathematics was a subject for you mathematics was a, a major subject in you doesn't matter you have not done honors in it still you can take it without any doubt and obviously msc mathematics can definitely take next goes engineering students having the doubts whether we can take it or not so uh, definitely you can because you see it's not like you are totally unaware of the syllabus you are totally untouched with the with the sum amount of uh, mathematics knowledge your subjects might be numerical analysis partial differential equation ordinary differential equation linear algebra matrices so these things you might have done already right so those things will help you over here and don't think that people over here or here they have edge obviously they have their own edge but you have your own edge because when we will enter physics part then there is a problem with with these students but you don't but you don't hmm? so uh, everyone has their own part of hard work they have to do they have to put an extra effort their own uh, section in which they have to put an extra effort but definitely you can go with the subject but at the end i must say that whichever background you are it doesn't matter you need to have a passion for the subject 
Mathematics, why you should take mathematics? It has no overlapping with any of the GS subject. Then why are you taking it? It's a, it's, it's the lengthiest uh, uh, optional subject. Then why are you taking it? You have a passion for the subject. And if you don't, please don't go for it. It won't be a good choice. Okay. Next. Okay. So uh, everybody knows that we have two papers of mathematics. A every optional subject, we have two papers, paper one and paper two. Uh, optional subject carries 500 marks, 250 here and 250 here. Okay, and uh, you, the exam is not like in the paper one and paper two are not in two different days. It will be in the morning shift and afternoon shift. Okay, in one single day you have to appear for both of the papers. Paper one is distributed in two parts: part A, part B. And here also it is distributed in two parts, part A, part B. Both are of 125 marks each. Both parts 125 marks each. Now, uh, paper 1 has 1 to 8 questions. Paper 2 will have 1 to 8 questions. Everything is similar. Okay. Now, part A and part 4, it will have 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 questions here, 4 questions here. 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Now, pattern of both of the papers are exactly same. So, I'm going to discuss the other details only for paper 1. It will be same for paper 2. Now, you have total 8 questions. 4 parts here, uh, 4 uh, questions here, 4 questions here. First question is mandatory to attempt from both of the parts. Total in total you have to uh, attempt five questions now you might be thinking that uh, if I have to attempt five questions then I have eight questions and out of eight we have to attempt five but that's not the case you see they have fixed this one and five so here you don't have choice you have to attempt one and you have to attempt five these are mandatory questions so now you're left with six choice uh, six choices and you have you have already attempted two questions. So uh, let me see this. Earlier you had eight and five. After fixing two questions, those are mandatory questions. So uh, you are left with six questions, and now you have to do three more questions, right? Now you might be thinking that three questions we can do from here, but that's not the case. You have to maintain a ratio of one and two, one is to two ratio. Either you do one question from here out of these three. Either one question, question from here, two from here, or two from here, or one from here. Okay, that's your choice. One question from here, or two, or one from here, or two questions from here. So basically, you have to choose one question uh, at least from each of part A and part B, except first mandatory question. All right. I'll tell you that these four questions will be from which topic, and these four topics, uh, these four questions will be from which topic. I'll tell that. But uh, over here, this is the. This is how your exam paper looks like. Okay, obviously it's a subjective paper. Now, this is the syllabus. Paper one has linear algebra, calculus, analytic geometry. This is your part A. And ordinary differential equation, dynamics, and statics, and vector analysis. This is your part B. So four questions from here: question one to four, and question five to eight from here. Similarly, here first four, question number one to four from here, they'll be asked in part A and question five to eight here, they'll be asked in part B. All right. And look at the subjects. Uh, again, the last two categorization, BSc, MSc or engineering. I hope at least whatever your graduation is uh, you can see some of the subjects at least some of the subjects should be there that you know you have done already or you have seen in your graduation right okay see linear algebra calculus analytic geometry ordinary differential equation dynamic and statics vector analysis paper one paper two algebra real analysis 
complex analysis, linear programming, partial differential equation, numerical analysis and computer programming, mechanics and fluid dynamics. Uh, physics portion, these two subjects, hmm, they are from the physics portion. So, easy for some, not easy for some, but you have to do it. Okay. Uh, also, please do not leave anything while you are uh, preparing for it. Don't leave anything means don't leave any subject. It's like we have uh, six topics. So you are not doing, let's say, uh, dynamics and statics. Don't do that. Not at all a wise choice. Leaving a topic will not be a wise choice. You have seen over here the choice. You have seen the choice. Out of six, you have to do three questions. But let me tell you, if you leave some subject, you already have crossed out some questions and you have already out of now four questions, you have to do three questions. You have reduced options for yourself. Now, I'm not saying that every subject needs to be perfect for you, but the basics, basic definition, basic questions, basic formulas, you need to go through each uh, for each and every subject. Do not leave anything in the subject. I do not leave anything in the syllabus. I'll go through each and everything. Okay, so at least the class, in the class, the questions that I'm doing, for example, you're not very interested in statics and dynamics, but it doesn't mean that you will miss classes. Go through it. At least what I'm doing in the class, go through those questions. Sitting here in the class, complete the questions that we are doing over here. Okay, so next. Okay, recommended study material, books and resources. So first of all, let's accept the fact that there is a plenty of material for mathematics. Right? You just Google it, you type uh, UPSC material for linear algebra, they will give you 10 books. I can tell you that go to the bookstore and buy these 10 books. But is it possible? Is it practical to go through all the books? Is it even possible to do that? No matter how much time you are appearing, maybe you are appearing next year or next to next year, but it doesn't matter, you, are, you cannot waste your time to go through 10 books for a single subject right so that cons that uh, uh, domain you have to create that okay which which subject i have to uh, go through which books and all so i'm going to tell you see for uh, your notes are very important first of all your notes are very very important first of all right notes that i'll provide you you can go through that as well. Other than that, when it comes to books, in the whole course, I, I will tell you to buy only two books. Only two books. Okay? But it doesn't mean that those two books are going to cover all the syllabus. You have to buy these two books. I'm not telling you uh, which subject and which book is that right now. Now, what about the other other books and uh, why we are not doing that and from where we have to complete it this see let me tell you for example linear algebra no, linear algebra i cannot recommend one book i personally i have looked into like five or six different kind of books i know that this topic is best in this book this topic is best in this book so you cannot buy all the books Right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, provide you the PDF of only that topic of that book which is required for this particular topic in the linear. But yes, we do have some subjects for which one book and only one book is enough. For example, analytic geometry. Analytic geometry. Uh, P and Chatterjee. Enough, more than enough. One book covers everything. Model algebra. First subject of paper two. Khanna and Bhamri. Khanna and Bhamri. You know. So there are subjects for which one book is enough. But not for all of them. Not for all of them. So I'll provide you the PDF for each topic. Like this is the topic we have started. So go through this PDF. It covers all the questions, all the practice questions and everything. And at last, I'll provide you the question bank. Question bank. Okay. Obviously, for the questions and you have to practice. Practice is the main key. If, if I give you 
uh, 50 uh, formulas of integration and i'll tell you to uh, memorize it yeah. so it will maybe it is not very difficult for you but uh, for someone for, with a non mathematics background it's a huge job why why it is not for us because we have done plenty of practice for the integration for apply we have applied those uh, formulas we have seen applications of integrations but we can remember that right so it's about practice not because you have memorized them very well no because you have done plenty of practice you have done lot of questions of integration okay so practice is the main thing next strategy okay so strategy for the effective time management and study planning this is very important see we are going to have class from 7:30 to 10:30 am uh there was a trembling sound in my 10:30 am because i try to wrap up 10 uh, it till 10 am but obviously there are some topics where we cannot uh, leave them for for the next class for the next session so it goes till 10:30 so this is our class timing right and uh, except that you have to give 2.5 to 3 hours of your self study on the subject in which 1 hour you will spend on revision of the class revision of class or less one or less like less than equals to one less than one hour okay and the other for practice practice and practice more and more questions you will never uh, get less number of means you'll never be out of the questions that okay ma'am uh, i had all i have done all the questions okay now look, uh, this was the first point okay about the timing and how much time you need to spend second most important uh, thing here about the time management is you have to complete the syllabus along with you now what happens is obviously i'm not going to go to uh, 50 questions per per topic but i may have given you the pdf or may have given you the question bank which has 50 questions of the uh, topic so now removing that one hour from here you are left with 1.5 uh, or or let's say let's say uh, you are spending 3 hours right after spending one hour here you are left with 2 hours so i have done let's say three topics in the class right topic 1 topic 2 and topic 3 and combined you have 100 questions to do obviously i have not done 100 questions in the class in 3 hours right but you have to do it in 2 hours so first difference is that i have to discuss obviously i'll take some time right because i just don't have to solve it and you don't have to just write it in your notebook i have to discuss with you maybe some people will have doubt i have to stop there right so obviously i'll take time but you have to complete it in 2 hours now if somehow you are not able to complete the 100 questions this this is practically not possible so what will you do next day you'll be stuck in those questions and i'll be on topic 4 topic 5 and topic 6 do as many questions as you can and leave it next day you should not touch this this now you have new topics new questions go to that don't stop we don't have time to do that complete the syllabus with me first and let me tell you when you will come back for the revision you might have done you might have done uh, 10 questions let's say or 20 10 to 20 questions uh, in that 2 hours when you will come back and for the revision you will be able to cover 40 to 50 questions in that in that two hours your productivity increases right time is managed but you have to complete the syllabus with me do not just get stuck on the uh, previous topics just because you have not completed the assignment just because you have not we are not supposed to do all the questions and you need to understand even if you have completed this 100 questions there will be a 101th question that you might not be able to do so it's not like more number of questions means more number of, of uh, more uh, chance of uh, uh, getting a question out of it you might get a new question so the basic point is you understand the concept and you, you need to cover all kind of questions not all questions all right 
so this is how you will manage next we have some common mistakes uh, to avoid number one which is which is really very important i need to discuss it uh pyqs when you people discuss obviously i cannot solve all of them and even if i do just by solving it here that's not going to help you let me tell you after completing the syllabus uh, of a particular topic you need to go through the P, uh, pyqs but do not do not uh look for categorized pyqs means let's say let's say we have done i'll tell you i'll tell you in between that 50% of the uh, 50% or 60% of the syllabus is completed of linear algebra so you can at least try uh, to go through uh, your linear algebra questions pyqs from pyqs so what you will do now you will google it you will google all the linear algebra pyqs and you will find it you will find it all the categorization okay so these are the all the linear algebra questions from 2011 2012 2013 but that's not going to help please do not do that mistake instead keep a track of a uh, year like you are doing 2022 year pyq look for the linear algebra questions because you need to understand you need to categorize sitting in the exam by yourself sometimes uh, the questions word problems you will not be able to understand this is this is uh, 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 lpp problem or this is uh, uh, mechanics problem so i don't want you to waste time in the exam to understand okay which uh, subject does it belongs to so please don't do that mistake do not look for the categorized if you are doing linear algebra questions from the pyq 2022 look for the question by yourself find out linear algebra problems okay this is first mistake number 2 as i said as i said complete syllabus complete syllabus with my pace with my speed okay do not get stuck at a particular topic just because you have not done that amount of discussion right and uh, obviously last thing is practice lack of practice that uh, that uh, time that i have given you 2.5 to 3 hours dedicate yourself uh, need not to be a fixed timing the reason being obviously class timing is fixed but uh, your practice time for mathematics you can change the reason being uh, because uh, to break the you know that uh, uh, everything else the every other course work like uh, uh, gs you are studying you are doing uh, doing history geography so at some point you get you know annoyed by all this and you want to do something out of the box then you can start your practice for the mathematics okay but that given time span you have to give for the practice how to integrate mathematics optional subject uh, preparation with other course work okay it's uh, actually i have already discussed it just just right now that uh, because it has no overlapping with an, a, a, any other subject and as you already know that i said in the beginning as well that you might must have a uh, passion for the subject very important and if you have passion for the subject this subject is a very very beautiful subject which fits with anything and it if it is not fitting with any other subject then as i said in the beginning if you are cho uh, choosing mathematics optional and that is not uh, that is creating a issue a problem later then it's not a wise choice okay so uh, obviously you are preparing for upsc it's not it's not a very easy so you need to practice and you need to manage all the times together everybody know how you can do it don't follow like he has done or she has done like that so i'll do like this create your own ideas discipline is must clock should run according to your work if you are waking up the other person should say okay he is awake uh, so it's it's this time he is going to lunch it's this time he is going to study now mathematics it's this time right you should be that disciplined this will bring everything together and you can beautifully put, fit this mathematics into your other coursework okay that's it from my side so all the best for your exam thank you so much